Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. This is a kind reminder that this is an unfiltered podcast that just might cause you to be inspired and possibly change your life. It also might contain strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. Thank you for tuning in. Run the episode. Let's go, baby. Turn this up. Episode four. First, let's go get the guest. <laughs> oh my god. Where are you rolling, brother? How we doing? <laughs> What's up, Grayson? Looking good. You told me you were gonna drop the suit, man. You look Dude, fresh. I'm glad I glad I tried. <laughs> Welcome to the crib. Alright, here we go. Episode four, Andrew Fox. Make some noise. We're Welcome live. on, brother. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. We we just <laughs> met five minutes ago. Five minutes ago. Although it feels like I've known you and I it literally felt like I know you. And then I, you- I felt the same way. I think uh, I've seen a lot of your stuff on Instagram and like we've been mutual for like we have a lot of mutual friends and like we went to the same uh-huh. high school at the same time. And so I feel like this was bound to happen. Maybe not like bound to happen on a podcast, but it was bound to happen eventually. So it was. to capture it on film, you guys will see the clip. It happened in the driveway. It was, it was magical. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, but I'm glad I'm glad you're here, bro. And excited to talk about your life, what you've done. You've done some cool shit. You, I like to think that. Yeah, you have. And... Yeah, I'm excited to learn more about you because I'm I don't know that much about you as I just said, just met you. So heck yeah. <laughs> so, so, but you were the one of the th- reasons I first heard about you is because I would just hear Andrew Andrew Fox on the Netflix show. He's, he's always on the Netflix <laughs> show. That's what I heard. Yeah, that, I feel like that's and, a especially in in this area. That's a, what I get a lot is oh you're that guy on the Netflix show or you're... and which one are they normally referring to? Um, Daybreak. Know? Daybreak is the one that they're referring to. That's the only Netflix show I've worked on. I, I mean, I've worked on some other shows that have been on Netflix, like Henry Danger. Okay, I was about to say, I thought it was from like Henry, Henry Danger. No, but I, I was on a Netflix original. It, that's actually what led me to drop out of uh, high school was um, So you Netflix did? Show. You dropped out of high school? Yeah, so I went to, I went to junior year at uh, the Woodlands, and I dropped out because the attendance policy at the Woodlands was super strict. And so I was mm-hmm. filming in New Mexico, and... Um, yeah, I was just getting not good grades, not not good at all. I wasn't able to keep up with the workload. I wasn't able to show up to class, and so I was just tanking. Um, but when I lived wow. in Los Angeles, I had my GED already um, because they have this exam for – it's people who either want to join the military or child actors. Um, and so when you're in Los Angeles and you want to work on a production, you only get a certain amount of hours. It's like – I think it's eight hours as a child actor. You get eight hours on set. Three hours has to be dedicated to school. They have a teacher on set teaching you school. And then there's like break times, all that. It's super regulated for like having talent on set. And it gets even worse the younger people get. So like babies can only be on set, like filming on the set for like 20 minutes out of the day. So like... Wait, did they get the... How does the money work with minors? So... We'll we'll get into that. There, okay. There's a whole structure okay. that they have. Okay. Because I think I think it was Macaulay Culkin. His, his parents had, had ended up taking a lot of his money. And so he... I, I'm not sure the exact, exact scenario, but... They've since put like rules and stuff in place that uh, stop mm. parents from taking from talent, <laughs> especially yeah. when they're younger. But so I took this test in, in LA that um, allowed me to get my GED early, but it also I took it because it allowed me to work twelve hours on set as a full time adult. So I didn't have to do any like it, it was basically like it removes all the regulations. So I was a more likely candidate to be hired for all the roles After I was you dropped going out for. High no, 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 before. So I, I oh. still remained in school. I took the test. I passed. I was a sophomore in high school. And I remained um, in high school because I didn't really have anything that, that would have led me to need to drop out or anything like that. And I was still doing small productions for like Cartoon Network, all this type of stuff. And so, yeah, when I moved to the Woodlands, um, I booked that Netflix show and I was Daybreak? already using – yeah, I booked Daybreak. Um, and I was already I using my, uh, my, my chess B is what it's called. That's what that test is called. Uh, but I was already using that to work more hours on set. And so – yeah, it was junior year, and I needed to get out of school just to be able to make sure that I didn't have a flunking transcript. And so I just took my GED, um, dropped out of the Woodlands, and went to community college instead after I filmed the, the Netflix show. So it enabled me to basically just skip senior year of high school for basically nothing. And so, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's kind of how that went for me. <laughs> Bro, I, I honestly, I didn't know that. But I knew that I, like, never s- knew where you went to high school. Mm-hmm. On, like, on, I didn't know... That you dropped out of high school. That's insane. Yeah, so I only went high to the, school the dropout for it. <laughs> kind it's of. next level of a college. But, but then you went to college. Yeah, so I, I took my GED. Um, I didn't want to give up on a formal education. I think even as an actor, like, I wasn't going to study acting. I think that's kind of ridiculous. Um, just to be blunt, I think if you're going to go spend thousands of dollars, get a degree that will apply to a career field in case acting fails. 
Um, so that's what I did. I went to uh, Lone Star, did two years there at community college, got my associate's degree, went to Texas State after that, and uh, I just recently graduated with my uh, bachelor's in electronic media. So I know you're good, great friends with Max, and yeah. he dropped out and everything like that, yeah. and it seems to be working for him, but I, I just needed to get my degree. Now I have it in my back pocket and now I'm basically like ready to, ready to go. You know what I mean? No obligations. <laughs> my parents are going to play this, this clip right now for me. <laughs> and like, see, look at this smart young man next to me. <laughs> I mean, it, it goes both ways. I definitely see the merit in um, dropping out for some people, but then again, I think some people need the structure and stability of education, like a formal education to get them to the point where once they have their degree, they can go venture out and do what they really, really want and try to make as much money doing it. So, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, that's just my philosophy on it, at least. <laughs> it that's goes dope, both bro. ways. So you, know? you finished how long ago? Uh, just this past, so it, what, it was May. May 2023. May 11th. And are you still acting? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of slow right now, especially, I don't know if you're, you're in the loop or anything with, like, the writer strike or, like, the actor strike. Yeah, I'm sure. a little bit. So I, especially on my, my feed, I know. Actress, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. But, is she with, uh, affiliated with SAG? Do you know what that is? No, it's I don't know. It's the Screen know. Actors Guild. It's like the union that you join like when you have enough like SAG credits once okay. you like, act on enough things. So I don't know. I Also, one of my roommates in college, his dad is a writer in LA, and I heard about the writer's strike. Yeah. So that's how I know about that. Yeah, so it's super slow right now. But I have agents that are um, like working for me as well as a, a, like a database of the talent that they have, and um, they send me auditions like basically via email. They just send me like, hey, we have an audition for you to do by this date. Here's the lines. Here's the character. And so, yeah, they come in. I basically just take a look at the breakdown, read the lines, memorize them, and then just like give them my best shot and then send. Basically, now it's like this. I just send them a video. You do know you, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but it, so it's an all over video? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, when I lived in LA, it yeah. was it was mainly um, in person. And that's one of the things that right now I'm lacking is, is that in-person work because I can show up for small gigs here and there um, if yeah. I was in LA. So I'm missing out on a lot of those, but... Right now, I think with the place I'm at in life, um, I, like I said, I was, I was pursuing a formal education, so I got that. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, and LA is too expensive right now, so I'm, I'm not looking to move to LA anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. L- LA's, I was actually going to go this summer. I really want to go. I, I met a bunch of people at college from LA. All my really? friends from LA, yeah. I really want to go, though. But so, how, would you ever move to LA? Yeah, definitely, when I can afford it. I just think right now it's not only, it, it's a great place to visit, bad place to live. I think it's, just personally, it's way too expensive, especially when you compare it to like places like Austin. Or... So you're a brokey? No, nah, not necessarily. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I just I don't like spending unnecessary funds. That's that I'm I'm very uh, cautious oh, with where, where I put my money. <laughs> what if you had unlimited money? Oh, then I'd live in LA, a hundred percent. I'd live in LA with a nice house and um, probably on top of one of one of the hills. So There's money actually... is stopping you from going to LA. Yeah, yeah, essentially. Unlimited funds is stopping yeah. me from going to L.A., yeah. yes. But also, I, I'm not going to lie to you, it's not just L- – L.A. is unattractive in more areas other than just the, the living expenses because there's a huge homeless crisis in L.A. Yeah. And there's there's so many problems. I don't particularly agree with all of the politics in L.A. I think some of them are kind of asinine. Um, but then again, I also uh, disagree with a lot of Texas politics. I think some of those are kind of asinine as well. So it kind of goes both ways, but – um, yeah, LA, I just think, frankly, I think it's, it's a bit of a, a gross pool of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, honestly, I haven't even been, so. Really? Yep. You should go to visit. It's, yeah. it's a really fun place to visit. And all the people are super, super cool there. Like, they, you, everyone's super laid back. Um, there's a lot of people that are only in LA to, you know, attain a certain level of, like, status and, and uh-huh. try to put themselves out there like that. So you'll definitely see some of those. Um, but so for the most part, it's a great place. Go go see the pier. Go travel yeah. the mountains. Go I want cliff to. jumping. Go do all that stuff, dude. It's super fun. Yeah, I was going to go backpacking this summer. Fell through. But now you get to year. do it in Asia, though. Yeah, exactly. That's way cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so when was your first gig acting? What age? Oh, my Lord. I think I was 11 you know? years old. Yeah. So I, you, you know those commercials that you hear that are like, do you want to be on Disney Channel? Or Nickelodeon. I don't know. I I heard them a lot when I was oh like, commercials to come and like like you hear them on the radio type of thing. They're like, oh, do, 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 do you want to no. be a child actor? Do you want to be? So I heard one of those when I was like ten or eleven, and I thought about it, and I was like, yeah. It's like yeah, I do. I do want to do that. That sounds like something wow. I've always wanted to do. And what did your parents say? 
So they, well, they, they, on, they gave me a shot, you know, I was 10 years old and I had a lot of ambition and I told them that I wanted to do it. And originally it was me and my younger brother. We both went and did this talent, it, which I'll be honest, those are scams. They, that's how they work is that they prey on your dreams and hopes of being famous, not famous necessarily, but Wait, what? at talent? least for me, like these radio ads that are like, Hey, we're, we want you to come audition for us and we have a talent network and we'll get you on these shows and stuff like that. Typically what they'll do is they'll bring out something like. D list or E list celebrity, like someone you've seen from one episode of a really big show, and they'll say, They're with us. And so it's like, Wow, I've seen her on TV before. They must be legit. And so you go, and then you audition, and they're like, Well, we love you. We want to represent you. It costs $10,000 to join. And that's how that works. And so I went through one of those, and my parents got scammed, basically. Well, yeah, they got scammed. Whoa, $10,000? So I, I don't know the exact amount, but I know it was damn, damn near close to at least at, at, at least seven, I would say. Wow. So it's, it's like a, it's a multiple yeah, um, four-figure investment. Yeah. And so, like, yeah, you think about, like, inflation and all that. It's a little bit more than, um, a little bit more than it, it, it would be uh, today, I think. Or wait, how does that De work? It would be... No, it would be. It'd be worth more. Yes, exactly. Either way, it's yeah, worthless yeah. is my point. Yeah. Those things are worthless. But through that, um, I did. A, I found a local agency, and I was represented through them. Got started. I did a talent show in New York, and I did really, really well for like my age group, specifically people who didn't want to model but did want like wanted to do acting and like commercial work. This was before you're 11. That's when I'm 10. That's when okay. I'm 10 years old. I was. I was going to come a, up. Yeah, it's called IMTA, the International Models, Models and Talent Association. They hold two events each year. One of them's in New York. One of them's in LA. And I did the New York one. Uh, like I said, I did, I did pretty good. I think I got third place overall, which I don't know how they base the ranking system. But basically, you go, you perform in front of like hundreds of agents. Uh -huh. and, and so a lot of talent recruiters go to these events to find like diamonds in the rough type of thing. And so I found my manager through there. Uh, his name is Steven. And I've been with Steven ever since. And so, yeah, I think... Um, he, he told me when I was 10, he was like, if you're going to do anything, you need to be in like where it's happening. You need to be in Los Angeles. And so my parents took that. They packed up. We moved and we went. And um, it was a long process. Too. It was like a two, three year process. I know for a while my, I was with my dad by myself out in L.A. Wow. And uh, my brother and my mom were still out here. And so it was just me and my dad literally just soloing it. I think I was transferring into online school, but that process took over a year and a half to do. So I was like in seventh grade zero schooling just going to auditions just cr killing it trying to trying to like m make a name for myself yeah and um the first gig i know that, that was your question i'm sorry i went through hold that no whole no thing just to get to this good it's interesting backstory to how all uh, this happens yeah so um after a while i think it, it was this first gig it was a student film for a because they have a lot of film schools out in la as well and so a lot of the gigs that i did when i was like I want to say 11 through 13 were student films and that's because I was eager to do any project but I was also not like well known enough to work on super big things yet and so it's it's really fun to it, for me it was like I just need to work on anything I can and I had never worked on a movie set before so I didn't know what what a, what a scale project looks like like a Netflix project versus like a student film project and so there was this guy, his name was Giovanni, he was a senior. Now that I think about it, he was my age when he was doing this. And so he was hiring, he hired me, I, it wasn't paid or anything, a lot of these student films weren't paid or anything like that. And so it was called It's What's For Dinner and it was a, a horror movie and I was the lead, it was a short film, a short horror film. And I was the this lead in the it. This is the first one. Yes, this is my first gig. And, oh no, that's my second gig actually, that's my first lead gig. My first gig was really small, I think it was called, it was, it was another student film. I can't remember the name. How much would you get paid for a student film to be a? Some of them, some of them, like nothing? three to four hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. Okay. Some of the, but the, those were like the really big ones where like they had like like I'd be shooting for weeks and I was like a, like one of the main characters and stuff. So, and, but even still, three hundred, four hundred bucks is not that much, yeah, especially considering like pay scale like nowadays. I think SAG actors today, I don't know what the exact rate is, but they make at least a couple hundred bucks a day. You know, like just being on set, and so like you just put it like this, like you go. So when I was filming Daybreak, you go. Um, I was in New Mexico for, I think it was originally it was supposed to be a month and a half, and they just extended it into I would fly back home for two weeks and then fly me back out again because they need to film more stuff. And so I, I ended up being out there for like three months, you know. Ooh. And like every day you're working, you're getting a pretty solid paycheck. And so was it fun? It's great. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. They're gonna say it kind of sucked. No, it was awesome. It was, oh, I, I was a 17 year old kid. Got to drop out of high school. Like I, I was, I was on top of the moon. Wow. Um, Wait, how? I just asked because I. Like I'm curious to know how much money are you making? Are you are you getting paid by the day? So when you're on set, yes, you get paid by the day. As far as you know, because you definitely know more than me. Like Hollywood in general, 
because I feel that so many rappers and singers, or when they talk about the music industry or Hollywood movies, it all seems so like rigid and it is cutthroat. It is extremely rigid and cutthroat. And like I don't know, kind of. Like I don't know much about the music industry, but the acting industry definitely is very rigid and cutthroat. And if you don't, if you don't listen, you don't work. That's basically how it is. You know what I mean? Like you have to, you have to do. And you know, at the same time though. Actors are some of the most extremely accommodated people in any workplace ever. Mm-hmm. Like they constantly have snacks. They'll cater to what food you want. Yeah. You get free lunches. Like you, you basically get to call your own shots. But at the end of the day, like when I'm on a set, I like to um, be as accommodating to the set as possible. I'm really easygoing. I don't need much. Yeah. I don't have any dietary restrictions. Not even that type of stuff. But like just in general, I'll be really uncomfortable for the sake of like getting the production done. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I've done that before. Like um, I remember – not too long ago, the last thing I worked on was a vampire movie. It's called um, Blood Relatives, and it's on. Oh wow! Now I feel bad. I can't even remember the streaming platform, but it's a horror movie streaming platform. Big horror movie guy. Yes, yes. This one, this one was more of a comedy vampire movie, but I remember just being. I was, uh, spoiler alert. I die. But I remember in my <laughs> in my in my I dead die. scene, um, I was like laying out on this hay bale, like so on, like and all of my limbs had fallen asleep, and they're like, just don't move, it's like so perfect. And they're like putting more blood on me, and I'm like literally like I'm like, damn, am I just gonna like lose circulation in like all of my limbs right now, like that type of thing? But it, which is fine, you know, because like you get through it, and then you're done, and you get paid, and and you look cool, you're dead, you know, then you're on in a movie. It's Have you fun. been dead before? In a uh, movie? Yeah, I've I've died actually. Plenty of times in film. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of horror movies you've been on? Yeah, actually, I think um, at least four off the top of my head. None of them any any like super big projects, but... Um, how many things have you been in in total? But how do you answer that? Because I guess some are movies, some are short films. Uh, s- some are commercials, some are TV shows, some are... Like you know, hundreds? Yeah, somewhere in the oh hundreds. <laughs> yeah, Dude, I'm going to be honest, I had no... Well, I did know that because like a day and a half ago, we, me and James Schillinger... Mm-hmm. You know James Schillinger? Yeah. We pulled up like your what do you call it? IMDb. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah like, that's what I think. My aunt has one too, so I I don't know what they're called. Like a highlight tape of an yeah. actor. Yeah. Oh, and the real? Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. Real, that we yeah. watched it and we were just like shocked at how many things you were in. Yeah. The funniest one. I'm definitely. It's like the one with the when you're like a kid smoking out of the bomb. Oh yeah, that was dude, comedy that was so dude. funny, bro. Yeah. That 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 was a fun one. That I had like, no you idea. Because so young. <laughs> yeah, I was. I think I was 13 or 12. Um, and I remember I remember auditioning for that. And then meeting the comedian um, David Angelo, D'Angelo, something like that. Um, but yeah, they, they basically give uh, comedians like a three episode special on Comedy Central, right? It's like a pilot, pilot. Do you know what a pilot is? Oh, like yeah. a pilot yeah. episode of a mm-hmm. show. So it's like basically like a, like Jordan and Peele, they got their first three and then they did really well. And so they're like, okay, we'll fund oh, it for more, amazing. right? Hit it. And so that was kind of his um, first three. But one of them was like, this is before weed was legalized in California. And he, the whole premise of the episode was like, what if weed was legalized in California? And so like that, that, and basically that was the whole thing. You walk outside and there's 12 year old smoking bongs out in the middle of the road, you know what I mean? Oh. Like that type of thing. And so and that, that was super, super fun, especially because in the end of that episode, they have like this, he smokes weed for the first time or the comedian does. Um, and I'm like in his, he has like a bad trip. Like it's like a oh. psychedelic and it's like, oh. I'm like his nightmare fluid. It's like, they had me like screaming into the camera all eerie and stuff. It's hilarious, dude. And all like the, the warped colors and everything. It, that, on, it becomes a horror movie at the end of that one. Now that <laughs> I know we are talking about horror movies. So that one's actually hilarious. If you haven't seen it, go, go watch it. It's called Nothing's Easy Dope. Uncensored okay. on Comedy Central. On where? Comedy Central. Yeah. How long is it? Short? It's like five minutes. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's okay. like a five minutes, just digest, that. super digestible. Yeah. <laughs> Did you did you see yourself becoming like the the next greatest like winning awards? So yeah, no, okay, I know or it no. sounds super egotistical, but you ever no, just like, I mean, I, feel I, like you're you wake up and you're just like I'm meant for more than yeah than not other people, but I'm just meant for more. Like I want to do something for myself that leaves an, an imprint on the world that other people will look at and smile and say, "Wow, yeah. he was great." Do you, think of, you were, do you think you were born that way, or do you think you came I, to that I have, conclusion? You know, that, that, that gets into, like, nature versus nurture. I have no idea. I don't think my parents pushed me in any which way to, to be something great. I think that my parents have always been super supportive in anything that I've tried to do. So it's not like they were talking down on me whenever I did want to do something, like, that was yeah. above, you know? Um, I think I've always been super competitive though and always okay. really aimed at just like winning i think winning has always big been winner. a really big 
part of my life, just trying to win. And it's not, not you have to be a good loser to be able to win, you know? Ooh, and so, that. yeah, I mean, it, well, <laughs> winning is, you're going to lose if you're trying to win. You know what I mean? Like, you will lose sometimes, and it's about That's like, so true. The more times the that you try, the more losses you accumulate because yeah. you're simply trying more. Exactly. And that's, it's so simple, though, because losses are lessons, and if you take those lessons, it's like I was telling you, oh, sorry, oh. Tucker. It's like I was saying earlier, though, um, <laughs> if you can just overcome setbacks, then literally just implement. And then you, you get a setback, you overcome it, and then implement. You know what I mean? You just literally keep doing that and rinse and repeat, and it'll happen. Um, What's the hardest setback you've ever had? My parents divorcing, probably. No, that Ooh. sounded so cringe, though. <laughs> but um, that no, was just cringe, like... That because that so I say that I feel like a lot of people their parents divorce and it's like the worst thing it's not the end of the world I'm it didn't like I think when it happened um, I was forced to move back to LA so like that's um, what forced me, well that's why I moved back to LA was my so my dad still lives in LA my mom lives um, here in Texas and so I moved back to my mom and then like I said I don't have access to those like day to day gigs and stuff like that um, that I would otherwise have if I lived in LA and stuff like that mm. and so also just like going from like, I had just recently worked on Cart Cartoon Network at the time, and, like, just, you go from finally having a friend group in California, because, like I said, so, I was really, really, um, anti, an like, antisocial and had zero friends by the time I was a freshman in high school, because Why? for sixth and seventh grade of my life, I had nobody but my father, um, to talk to. I didn't have friends, you know what I mean? Like, I moved uh -huh. to LA, I didn't go to public school, I was doing online schooling, and so I literally just had my dad. And so, um, for me, it, it, not only did I just have my dad, but every other kid that I saw, I was competing against for the same role. So it was a very, like, I was in a very competitive, like, mindset for, like, three years of my life where, like, I, it was hard for me to make friends with other kids my age because, like, anytime I saw them, we were in the same lobby waiting to get our name called to go audition for a part. You know what I mean? And so, Bro, and you see some of the same kids for a role and sometimes they get it versus you and sometimes you get it versus them and, like... It's all, like, I think I've always had a good attitude about it, like, since day one, to not, like, um, like really, like, like think badly of other people, especially yeah. when you're competing. Because at the end of the day, it's competition. You know what I mean? We're uh -huh. all working to, to make it. And so that's how it should be, you know? That's how you yeah. breed better people. Parents divorced. Yes. Child actor. Not toxic environment, but competitive environment with your friends. You have you feel you have no friends. Well, I had no friends. I literally, literally. Had, I did not have friends, no. I just didn't, I didn't talk to anyone my own age. I had YouTube, and I had... My lines. Yeah. That was like basically, and so like, I mean, my lines. <laughs> yeah, literally, and um, a lot of lines. Yeah, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, a lot of lines as a twelve-year-old. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it was just not the best environment for for a young kid trying to develop himself, you know. And um, while I did love it, and at the time I didn't know the difference. I didn't know anything was wrong. You know what I mean. And so I realized, though, when I went as a freshman in high school, I went to public school in uh, Los Angeles. And so yeah. um, at that point, my mom and my brother had moved back from Texas up here. So everyone was all together. The whole family was there. And we both went to public school. And I remember, like, freshman year of high school, I had no social skills. I, I was borderline just a pathological liar to people because I had no idea. Whoa. I had no idea who I was. I would just lie to, like, make small lies up to impress people, like, Whoa. all the time. One of those and, kids. Um, yeah, no, literally, one of those kids, <laughs> exactly. And um, no wonder people didn't really like me all that much. <laughs> and so, like, I, it took a while for me to um, just adjust to – like the regular social norms because I was I was always trying to compete with other kids my age and like that's crazy it was it was just it, so it was nice. like culture shock right and so through that I, I made some really cool friends who hated me at first who who really just did not like me at all but um they were my age and we were we were all super cool and, and eventually like I learned I just learned like how how kids act with each other you know what I mean which was a little bit different than what I was used to for the past three years you know uh -huh. and so now these guys are my best friends like I call them every day like we talk all the time um, but yeah I was just I was so antisocial and had no idea what I was doing with myself um, when I was a freshman in high school and so to go from that to having like your best friends finally all of a sudden you're working on like Nickelodeon you're working on Cartoon Network on Chrono Minds like all this type of stuff That's like crazy. It, it's really awesome and um, and yeah, so everything was going really good for me, and then boom, parents divorce. And like I said, that's not like the, that. That I feel like sometimes people overplay that that aspect of their lives because a lot of people have divorced parents. A lot of people have worse situations than people with divorced parents, and so I, I tend to sympathize with that. But um, for me personally, it it removed me from my friend group, my like first real set of friends. It removed me from the place that was providing me all the work that I wanted. Like all my, it felt like my dreams were just yanked away from me. You know what I mean? And so going from that to 
living with my grandparents back in Texas until my mom could find an apartment and then still having to go to school and stuff and then going back to school with people that I didn't really know or like to begin with, you know what I mean? And so it was just a lot of bad shit. And then boom, I, I honestly, I booked Daybreak and it was like my life changed. And you know what's crazy about Daybreak is um, for me, it has a lot of like personal significance because it came out on my 18th birthday, which was like wow. a lot. It was like a signifying like you became an adult, you did that. But also it was weird because it was based off of Glendale, California, which was the school the high school that I went to in Daybreak was my rival high school in LA. And what? so, yeah, so it was really weird that like, it was like worlds collide. Were you filming in the school? No, we filmed in New Mexico, but they modeled the school and everything like that. And so Whoa. I remember there's a mall called the Glendale Galleria um, in Whoa. California. And they, since it's based, the show was based off Glendale, they did a lot of promotions and had like a bunch of apocalypse trucks because it's a high school zombie apocalypse show. So they oh, had like okay. a bunch of apocalypse trucks. And like fake blood on the windows at this mall, like everywhere representing the show. And so my friends were at this mall, like taking pictures. And there's like me on like pictures and stuff, and like all my <laughs> all my castmates and stuff were on like the elevators, and it was all super super cool. And so it's crazy how like everything comes around full circle. You know what I mean? I don't know. So like Daybreak, I I think my uh, wait, how old are you again? Twenty one. Oh. 21. No, no, no. What did we, during Daybreak? Oh, I was seventeen when I was filming. Eighteen, like I okay. said, came out on my eighteenth okay. birthday. So, yeah. And wait, so the money. Uh, this is like my biggest question about how this industry works. Like with the money, when so, when you were 12 and you were making money from these gigs, mm -hmm. how does that work? So your parents get a portion of it, right? There's a, there's an account, a bank account called a Coogan account. And the percentage might have changed, but 15% of everything that a child actor makes goes into that account. And that only that person can access it when they turn 18. 15%? 15%. So, so the the eighty five percent is up to the parents. Yes, technically, Whoa. technically speaking, up yes. until they're eighteen. Well, if they've spent it all by then, then no. I, my parents, I, I I was very fortunate enough to oh, where yeah. my parents didn't really need the money that I was um, making, and they were able to still and they they kind of set it up as a nest egg for me and just saved everything, which is what I did now. Like that's that's what I did. I didn't spend any of my money. I didn't get anything super cool. I think I lied to my friends when I. Uh, I mean, I lied to my friends in uh, the Woodlands when I uh, booked Daybreak. I told them I was getting a Corvette and stuff. And so for my brother, my brother's 15th birthday, we rented a Corvette for him. And so I took a bunch of flex pics with this Corvette and sent to tell my boys and said I bought a, a Corvette with my Netflix money. But uh, I totally didn't. <laughs> w were you making that kind of money, though? Um, I paid for, my, like, the majority of my college and, and stuff Whoa. like that. So. Yeah, it, it definitely helped, and I, I have money saved, and I have, like, some investments and stuff set up for, like, long-term stuff that I just won't touch for now. That's just great. Just because, um, yeah, and, and right now I live I live off of every dollar that I make, you know? I, right now I work at a restaurant. Like, I, okay. I have no boundaries as to, like, how, how my earning capacity is going to be, you know? Yeah. And I always, so, I, I love this term, and I've heard it, not in a way of sh struggling. I mean, there's so many, all artists or like, you are at the beginning, in the beginning could be... 20 years, I mean, mm -hmm. who knows? Like, in a way, struggling. It's like you're always, like, fighting. Like, you know what I'm saying? To stay, like, every artist, until you get, like, the, those breaks. And it until gets you easier. get well, You know what I mean? Like, everyone who makes it. music, yeah. they, they talk about how they were, like, a struggling artist or a starving artist. You know, not actually, but it's like, no, but sometimes, I mean, in even this cases, right now, yes, it's like, literally. I feel like I'm going, I'm working to, like, put stuff like this on, like, this podcast. Like, is it going to get a thousand views? I'm not making any money from this right now. Right. I mean, I want to in the future, but right now, it's, you know, some, day, some days I don't work. I just don't stop working until I go to sleep. There's so much going on. Right, exactly. And, and, and you can't paid. even put an hourly on that. It's not like you're getting yeah. paid X amount of dollars an hour to do that. You're no. just trying to do this so that way you can gain traction and do something that you like. And then once people start catching on and they like it too, it's you're, you're set, you know? Yeah. Then and then you have set. people that want to come work for you and set oh. all this stuff up for you so you're not doing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? True. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kurt, for the help, bro. Yeah, yeah, Kurt. <laughs> See? That's funny. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> not yet, Kurt. He's a G. He's a Jew. He's a Jew. <laughs> I just said he's a Jew. He's a G. He's a G. I just got canceled. <laughs> um... <laughs> So wait, that's crazy. So eighty. So the guy in why oh, am I forgetting his name? Home Alone. What's his name? Macaulay Culkin. So like, how many? He was making millions. I'm sure. I'm sure. So I'm sure he was at least making millions. Yeah. His parents were getting to choose what to do with eighty five percent of that. I don't know. I think so. I'm not sure exactly when that account was established, but I think. Oh. I think at the time I could be dead wrong, and I don't want to say anything super confidently if I'm absolutely wrong. But I think 
there wasn't anything in like any any um, like s- stipulation set up uh-huh. and for like protection for the the minor in case that happened at the time. And so I think that like his parents went and spent. I don't know what they spent it on. Probably probably like not not like assets. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, dude, that's uh, tough. <laughs> so yeah, that's and, weird. Yeah, I, I I do know that there was a. Um, a point in his life where he didn't have much money, you know, and I don't know yeah. if he was homeless or on the street or anything like that. But I know that like his parents definitely stole a large sum of the money. So wow, no, I wouldn't say stole. I mean, technically they were getting it, you know, so like they were getting paid it. But you know, at the same time, like I, I if I, I, I don't know how I'd feel if my parents were to spend like be like, oh, you know, like yeah, you've been working since you were twelve years old, but we don't really have much for you yeah. besides the fifteen percent. That'd be kind of frustrating, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, but your parents, you felt like that it was it was good. You got. Oh, my parents have always been extremely transparent with me. I think that's, that's why great. I'm able to, to keep a budget now is because I've always been familiar with how much I'm making, how much I should be saving, how much I should be that's dope. putting in accounts that I don't have to touch for a while. You know what I mean? Like that type of thing. So but you're working at a restaurant right now. To, mm-hmm. So you're out of college. No more school. Mm-hmm. Looking for full-time jobs right now for, with my degree. It's still, it's, But the dream is to be full-time acting, mm-hmm. of yeah. course. Okay. I always feel like I'm, I like to say you're always one gig away. You know what I mean? Like you're always one gig away from like just getting your big break, you know? And I've had like, like I said, I've, 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 I've been on gigs that are like, you'd say they're like, wow, he's been on Netflix. He's been on, Hulu yeah. Lives, he's been on this type of stuff. But it's to me personally, it doesn't feel like I've done like all that much. You know what I mean? Maybe oh, really? because I've been doing it like my whole life. Honestly, I feel like I've digressed since I've graduated college just because I, I don't have a full-time job. I'm looking for like full time positions. I don't have any acting work in the in the pipeline right now. Like so, sometimes you just have to like sit down and relax and take a deep breath because like it might feel like you're not moving forwards, but as long as you're constantly learning and improving and trying to up your game in whatever fashion, I think ultimately you'll you'll end up finding something that'll work for you. You know? Yeah. So like that's that's kind of how I keep myself sane. Just like I'm one gig away, and I'll I'll keep acting till I'm like sixty or seventy, dude. I, I okay, don't. I was gonna like, ask. That's, you, that was my this is question. a long term game, bro. If I don't really make my big break until I'm eighty years old, I don't care, dude. I just love doing it. You know? Really? Yeah. So it's you, so fun you, being on set. You just try it. Like honestly, you should. <laughs> you should. So try you it. you just well, I'm about to say. So what is the what is your goal? Is is it is it to be making like tens of million bukus of money? Is it to be on your dream show? Or is it just to like enjoy your life? My goal is to be a filmmaker. Like a like a movie maker. Like, so I not be an be, actor. No, yes. But I want to act in my movies. Got it. Kinda okay. Like, so you know, okay. So you you, let, let's tweet. be real for a sec. You know Adam Sandler? Yeah. You know how he just puts all his friends in his movies? No. What? Like no. Chris Rock? Like I don't, about, I don't about... watch many movies at all. Really? Okay, or so TV have you seen show. Grown Ups? It's only YouTube. Have you seen Grown Ups? Yes. So you've seen Grown Ups? Max, that's Max Bernardi's favorite movie, and he, <laughs> I've probably watched like six times. Yes, yeah, so you know, so all of those people, Kevin James, Chris Rock, Adam Sandler, they're all in all of the Adam Sandler movies, right? My goal is to just basically have like me direct, produce, and I'll Dude, do all this so stuff, sick. and just have and get my all friends, your friends. Play. Yes, exactly. Bro, okay, th- that then, same mentality is what I'm trying to do, like in, in my life. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's I just, just want, I want I want to make something same. that I love doing that makes a, consequentially makes a lot of money doing it, but have my friends do it with me. Bro, that's like, exactly yeah, that's exactly, exactly it. what I imagine. <laughs> like I imagine, like somehow me and my ten friends, and then even acquaintances are like we're all and everyone can participate for them, yeah. in some this business. See, like, you want to make movies. That's dope. Yeah. And, like, I, like there, there's steps to get there. And then there's – I want to start my own business. I don't know exactly what, um, but I do want to start. I've, I've done – I kind of do what Max does right now. Maybe not to the extent that he does it. I have a lot of respect for Max. He, he's crazy, and his videos yeah. are insane, and he's super talented. Um, but, yeah, I, I have freelance through college. I also served, like, at restaurants through college. I worked at the athletics department in college to film and do social media for, like, their athletic stuff. And so I've had a lot of, like – work in the space, but I'm, I'm, I'm more into the filmmaking aspect rather than short form content. But I know that right now that's, what's just killing the game, you know, is short yeah. form content and Instagram reels and YouTube shorts and all that. Yeah. Stuff they are kind of less fun to make. In yes. my opinion, you can I tell think, a story, you got to tell a story in a 10th of the time. I completely agree. It, it, uh, for me, I'm, I'm such a perfectionist when it comes to the stuff that I want to post and I want to do. And so yeah. if it's not like up to that standard, which in, in consequence, because you have to make so much quantity of short form content in so order to much, like y- you sacrifice quality you know and so I'm, I'm i'm a big quality over quantity type of guy <laughs> so you want to make movies mm-hmm. be the man acting them so be the you'd be the director and actor what else do you say producer 
Yeah, I mean, that's just because you what know, you that, have wait, what does that even mean? People who fund it, the people who fund the movie. Oh, that's what producing means? Mm -hmm. You produce, oh. yeah. Oh, what? I thought producing yeah, they, meant... They're the money bringers. Like and they the also company get, that does they the also editing get and... No, that's, like so that's production. like post-production. So that's like post-production stuff. Oh, so, so like, the producers are not in production. They're the ones that get that that walk around with um, suits and get to say, we don't like this, we do like this. And their reasoning is they funded the project. <laughs> so they what? are the ones that, that have a lot of the say-so. But they're not the director? Stuff. No. So you no, want to be director... able to fund it, your own movie, direct yes. it. That way, if you're supplying the money, then you can... Yeah. Boston. Then you ultimately have all the say so. You have right? all of the charge of the movie. Kind of like Gordon yeah. Peele, right? Mm -hmm. like a movie, yeah. Exactly. He, he a lot exactly. That's dope. I didn't know he was An art tour. <laughs> and then be, what, the main role? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Ultimately, that's the goal. <laughs> that's crazy, bro. That's sick. So you want to make your own movies? Yes. Fund the project so that way you can be the lead actor and decide everything that happens. Yeah, basically. And be a top G. But I want them to be good movies, not bad movies. You know what I mean? Like, probably I mean, better course, than yeah. Grown Ups. Even though I love Grown Ups, that's a funny oh, movie. Like, I like serious movies. I like movies that make you think. Okay, me too. Really? Me too. You said yeah. you don't watch a lot of movies. So like, I, I don't, but that would be a reason to get me to go watch a movie. Like, okay. If, and if it's not even a deep movie, I always am trying to make it deep. Like, if I went to go see the new Barbie movie right now... I would be trying to think, like, what are they really trying to say? I heard that they made it really deep as far as, like, political concepts. That's what like, I heard. Yeah. <laughs> so if, so you you want, if you wanted to go see the Barbie movie and really look for stuff, I'm sure there's a bunch of okay. glaringly obvious stuff okay. that you can pick okay. out of. <laughs> but, yeah, I do, like, the movie, like, the Matrix movie. Oh, yeah. Or, like, movies like that. You know, Have you Red, seen Oppenheimer, like, the new one? No. Wait, how often do you see people that you know that are on TV? Um, oh, Somewhat frequently, actually. Wow, somewhat that's frequently. weird. It's yeah, that's it's weird. which is really weird. So there's, there's is it weird? You used to it. It's like, mainly oh, commercials. Um, so there's some people. But do you freak out though when you see like oh, I'll text them. Yeah. Oh okay. Like uh, there's this movie in theaters right now called The Hill. It's a baseball movie. Um, okay. This guy named Colin Ford. He was the main character on Daybreak. I saw. I I went to go see Oppenheimer and I saw the poster for it. And so I texted him. I was like, Yo. That's, that's hype. So that's <laughs> hype. Bro, well if. <laughs> Not to invite myself, but if you ever make a movie, bro, I would love to help. Oh yeah, that sure. Project. I'll give you a role. You'll, you'll be, be like so the sick, you'll be like the news anchor. You know what I mean? Like, dude, in the, <laughs> dude that'd be sick, right? <laughs> dude, yeah. That's that's such a cool dream. Yeah. Okay, wait. How did so the way I to shift topics? But I, I met you or knew of you through Ryan Grimm. Also, I think Ryan Lund. Just like seeing yeah, stuff, just mutual. So friends how, did you, stuff. how did you know them? So how did you know Ryan. When I so that's actually a really funny story. Um. When I was in high school, you ever been in a fight, Grayson? No. Never, like I've never been in a real no. fight. So I was in, I was in one. I defused them. One I really. I and they, they rock away. You know, oh, so. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just don't want the smoke. I, yeah. I see, I see. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm I couldn't feeding. do, when I was in a sophomore in high school, I was a little pudgy, pudgy kid. I could not just flex and make them scared. <laughs> I just had to deal with it. But, um, so there, my, my, I tell me about my, my Cal, group of uh, friends in California, right? One of them, sophomore year. They weren't all the best kids at the time. They're all great now, but we were all, you know, young, so, sophomore year. Yeah, young shitheads. You know, you know how they they do things. And, I like how uh, this is how you met these guys. Oh yeah, no, this is how I met Grim and everyone. This is <laughs> wait, wait till I get in this. So there's you beat so him up? no. So basically, one of our friends was really like nobody liked him. He was basically just getting kicked out of the friend group type <laughs> thing. Like, like, well, no, for good reason too. Oh, like, okay. I don't want to get into all that, but just for good reason. And so instead of like. Just leaving with Grace, he like picked on me and like wanted to fight me all of a sudden. And oh. I'm the one, I'm the aggressor, and I did all this stuff. And so I got jumped in high school um, by like I remember me and my best and friend Blake. And no, 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 this is in California. So oh. in California, we had open lunch policy, right? Which meant we could go oh, to like Walgreens for lunch as long as we came back to fifth period. Walgreens? Walgreens? Yeah, that's where we would go. I'd go Walgreens? Walgreens? Yeah, it's right up the street, bro. <laughs> it's like the 7 Eleven, you know? Some, It'd be Walgreens, 7 Eleven, or the French Sunday Bakery. Nights? No, 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 no. <laughs> they had like like candy and like soda and stuff, you know? Um, I remember after my, me and that guy had an argument, the next day at lunch, we're, I'm looking across the street um, at like where they normally hang out called the French Bakery. It was like a, just a bakery place. And there's like, 30 guys and Cameron, the kid, oh, I should, we'll call him Dave. We'll cut that name oh, out. Yeah. We'll call him Dave. So, Dave <laughs> so, so me and my friend Blake, who we can say his name, are, are like walking out of Walgreens and there's like 30 dudes and Dave staring at me and they start sprinting across the street. Like 30 guys, bro. But and Grim so, comes out of nowhere. No, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We're not there yet. So... I'm running back to the school with Blake and the next, uh, basically they caught up to me. They like threw a few punches at me. I was like, I'm going to snitch. <laughs> they were like, no, don't snitch. I was like, okay, then we're going to fight tomorrow one-on-one -on -one and we're going to take care of this. Otherwise I'm snitching. And so the next day 
um, during lunchtime, I fought him, and the fight went viral. I, I, I'm, I'm a, a, a first degree black belt in Tong Soo Do, and so I, um, I which Kurt That's knows what it this. Was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, um, I, I. Aww. I did a really cool. I'll throw the clip up because I want you know that's awesome. You'll you'll think it's awesome too. I hope. Oh shit! Okay. But, um, <laughs> I, I I did a spinning heel kick on this guy and it, it hit him in the face and it was posted on like hood clips. It was featured on iFunny. It was on like World Star. Did it, he it know just you knew how to viral. fight? Yeah, he did too though. But he was really bad. Which is oh. besides the point. Point is, this fight went viral, right? Did and, you knock like, him out? For like three seconds, he was on the ground. <laughs> yeah, but um. That fight went viral. It got like local news coverage. And so when I moved back, I met with Christian Bustamante. Oh, yeah. Who we had played PlayStation. Like, I, I had played PlayStation well, with James him. James knows him well, too. Yeah. yeah. And so we were just playing PlayStation and stuff. And I was like, oh, I just moved back. Like, and he was like, you should just come over. Like, we should meet and stuff. And I was like, okay, cool. So I went Wait, over. How'd you meet him? How'd you connect? Uh, one of my friends before I moved to LA was, um, his name is Gabe and Gabe knew Christian. And so me, Gabe and Christian would play video games all the time, just on PlayStation and stuff. And so when I moved back, I was like, okay, cool. And time to meet Christian. And Christian was like, oh, this guy Grim, he lives down the street. Like he's super cool. You should let him come over. And, uh, so Grim came over and we were talking yada yada and Grim, uh, I forgot how it came up, but I, I think I brought up the fight and Grim was like, no way. He was like, that's you, bro. He's like, that's so sick. <laughs> and so we, we instantly like Christian and, and, and Grim had known that that was me from the fight video. And so that like kind of got me into like the no, like that's how I kind of met everybody was like, oh, this guy's been in a sick ass fight. Like check the clip out. Like it was super sick. Roll the clip. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll definitely roll the clip. Yeah, I'll, I'll send the clip over. It's cool. <laughs> I, I have like eight different, you, here, you actually want to see it real quick just yes. for reference? Yes. <gasps> <laughs> yeah. Wait, I've definitely seen that. That's what I'm saying. Oh, wait, play it again? Yeah, that, that's me. <laughs> that's that's me. insane. Did you knew you were going to throw that kick? No. So you destroyed this guy. Ryan already knew the video, saw the video. Yeah. And um, he came over and I was just, we were just shooting the shit and just having a good time. And basically then, yeah, I went over to Ryan's crib, met Lon and everyone like that. And so ever since then, yeah, I, I've just been in the know with like the people here just because of that. Like that alone got me. Also that, like I was telling you, I, like nobody really liked me freshman year of high school. Like I, that gave me all of the social status I needed in high school. Like there were people wow. that would, like I would, had no idea who they were. Like, and I shit you not. Like, I ran back, because this was during lunch that we fought. So, like, we have class right after this, bro. And, dude, my class was right across the hall from his, too, which was so funny. Because I remember we ran, I ran back to the school, and a cop car pulls up. And he rolls the windows down, and he stops me. And he's like, he's like what's going on over there? Because you saw there's a bunch of people. I was like, I don't know. I was like, I think there's a fight or something going on over there. I was like, I don't know. You should go, like, check that way, bro. And so the cop drives off, and I just sprint back to school. And I, I get back in fifth period, and... uh like, I'm walking to fifth period, and there are people that I had no idea who they were. They're like, dude, you're the man. They're like, what? that was so sick. They're like, that's awesome. And so, like, my entire, like, high school, like, uh, what, what would you say? Like, reputation just went up, like, about 10 points. Just Bro, for, just that, that, I know that feeling because this year at, in a college football game, I ran on the field after uh -huh. the game and got chased. Uh -huh. And I had a video of it, and then I posted it. And then... Anyway, the next day, like everyone, people who had like barely remembered, like, bro, I saw that video of you running on the field. <laughs> like, and it was like, it felt like I was, like, it was like so overwhelming. What was that like? What was the aftermath of that like? Like, did, were there any consequences? Because I've seen the video. You've done it multiple times. <laughs> yeah. No, there was none. Oh, really? I, they, I think it's, it's a college football game. If it's like NFL, I think that's a lot different. Yeah. I don't know. They grabbed me and brought me to the side and I thought, I thought I was getting arrested until I was like, crap, I, I finally got arrested. Because I'm telling myself, I'm just like... You're thinking you're just a title for the YouTube video, right? You're like, I yeah. finally got arrested. You're like, <laughs> yes. clickbait. No, but um, they just like pushed me off the field, like onto the stairs to get out. And uh -huh. they didn't say anything. Oh. Like they just like were grabbing me forcefully. And I was like, oh, I don't gosh. think you should say that out there in the public because then you're just going to entice a lot of people to go do the same thing. You know what I mean? I mean, that was one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life, though. Okay, fair enough. So maybe other people should try it at home. <laughs> I mean, if you're not, I mean, it was after the game. It you wasn't have to be disturbing fast, anyone. You have yeah, to be really fast. Be fast. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only <laughs> reason I really got tackled was because a, a player on the other team that lost shoved me over. So, like, I lost my. my 
Oh yeah. Wait, did you guys make up? I think like, I, I was going you around. You guys made up in the DMs or something, right? What? You guys made up in the DMs or something, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I definitely saw that. Yeah. That, that's yeah. Super, super DM'd cool. him, roasting him because he shoved me, and then he was like, sent back a Bible verse, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then we like kept talking, and I just like. For, I just pretended like he didn't shove me and we started talking. It was really nice. <laughs> really nice. That's awesome. Like, really nice. So, yeah. that's. The, I'm just saying I know how you feel from, like, that going viral. And, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Wait, so what ended up happening? You go back to class? Did oh, yeah. I went back this? to class and then I went through fifth period. Nobody really knew. Well, everybody knew besides the teachers. And then I went to sixth period and the same cop who had, had pulled up on me during the fight and asked me, like, what was going on. He came into my classroom was like, he was looking at me and was like, Andrew. And I was like, Dude, awesome. you're a legend for that. Though. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I, one of the most legendary things I've ever done. Like, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll tell my kids about it. It'd be super cool. Definitely show them that. Yeah. Now nobody wants to mess with me. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to learn a fighting. Uh, what's, I can teach what, you spinning heel you, kick. Yes. Yeah. I can teach. It's really. I want to learn how to fight. I feel like that's it's, just... it's like two steps. One, two, and it's like. So do you feel like you could confidently fight anyone relative to your size? Yeah, relatively my size. Like on the street. I don't. I don't like fighting. I really. Yeah, no, I've only but, been in two fights. But do you feel before. like that you have that card in your pocket? Like, yeah. I could. I could beat your ass. I've had to do it before. Like not like, and I'm not super violent, but I've had to defend myself before. Like yeah. I've been. I've been on Sixth Street too late before. You know no, what that, I mean? Dude, like, when I was saying this, I was imagining Sixth Street. Yeah. No. Literally, I've had. Yeah. Sixth like Sixth Street has happened before, and crazy. people get crazy. Yeah. And so, you just, as long as, for me, it's like I just don't want anyone that I'm with to get hurt. I don't. You know what I mean? Like I just don't. Also, I just don't like violence, man. Why do people got to be violent? You know? Yeah, no, like I the, agree. Because, you know, it's like, yeah, I just like being able to defend myself, you know? Yeah, if no, the that's opportunity what I were to, to arise, I'm going to be able to protect the people that I care yeah. about, you know, my friends. I feel that if you're a man that is not only like physically fit, but you know how to fight, I feel like your word is like t worth almost twice. Yeah. In, in my head, because... Because you're able to... Defend the, yes. defend the word. Yeah. And I've heard people like make a case for why that is. And I mean, back pre-modern... Before now, like all of human history, I mean, you had to fight to stand up to for claim it. You anything. had to be yeah, willing exactly. to like fight someone for it. So yeah, I just think that's something I want to learn. So that's cool that you know. How to... So wait, what do you know how to do? What Tung Soo Do? It's like a, a South Korean martial art. Tung Soo Do. They teach you here. You can learn here, Mr. Tung Soo Do. <laughs> and what what is that? What's the difference between that and karate, jiu jitsu? I, I would Muay say Thai? I would say it's extremely. It's, it's not ground fighting. There's like zero ground fighting. It's mainly oh. just like self-defense on your feet. You know what I mean? So like there's a lot of kicks. There's a lot of, um, it's, I would say it's extremely similar to karate. It's nothing super, super intense, but, um, it definitely teaches you the fundamentals, you know, to like where you could, and also like spinning heel kick like that, the one I did in the video, that was just super flashy. That's like a super flashy movie. Yeah. You, really, you really ultimately wouldn't do that unless you're in the cage. You know what I mean? Like, like so like, did you, were you planning in your head? Oh, dude, I was in the shower that night, like before the fight. And I was like, because they had jumped me the day before. And so I was in the shower that night, just thinking like, shower. what? I was thinking, I was going through the Mortal Kombat textbook, bro. I was like, what am I going to do to this kid? Because I was you, so Are confident. you nervous or are you just like, I'm going to destroy him? I was so ready to destroy him, dude. Because I, I weighed a little, I think we weighed about the same. He's a little bit taller, but I just knew that like he was like he's like a paperweight bro this kid was just a stick so i was like i could kind of do whatever Dude. um and he was picking a fight with me which was even more fun for like me yeah it's like i don't have i have nothing to prove here you know what i mean i like yeah and so you don't feel bad then. i don't feel bad at all no it was honestly awesome yeah i wonder how he is today i hope he's <laughs> i hope he's doing good you know I still have the shoe that I hit him, you know? I have the, I have the, the singular shoe. Yeah. That's fire. And the sh I have the whole outfit, too. It's like, honestly, I should just get, like, a shadow box and have it, like, as, like, my my like a, like a Batman armor stand, you know? Yeah. Just, like, put, like, that PacSun t-shirt and the Vulcan shorts and, yeah. like, the Adidas kicks. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope, bro. <laughs> bro, before we get wrap this up, we probably have several more minutes, five more minutes, but I just want to touch on what is who is your biggest inspiration for what you want to do in your life? Like, why do you want to be different? and not have a normal job or have a normal life? What has inspired you? I think it's important to recognize that when you compare yourself to other people because you have to compare yourself to other people in order to like monitor how you're doing. And you can compare yourself to yourself as well. But I think, um, yeah, I, I just think um, what's inspiring for me is is finding people who, who do what they want and do it the right way and do it without like scamming other people, you know? Mm. Just, I mean, just talking about what has... I guess I kind of touched on it, or we kind of touched on it earlier about what made you start wanting to be different, and you yeah. said you woke up one day and just thought you were meant for more. I, well, I think that honestly, yeah, I mean, ever since I can remember, I think it's just been 
I've always been super competitive and always aimed to win. Yeah. And so as you get older, the things that you win are not games of hide and seek and they're yeah. not games of tag, but instead it's how do you win more money mm-hmm. than, um, not than any other person, but how do you win more money than you did previously? How do you, how do you set yourself up to where you can, you can live and do what you want to do and be happy and, and financially, um, feasible, you know, yeah. and make all that work. Cause it's hard. It's hard to do that. I, I feel like it's hard for someone to really do what they want to do and make it work for themselves to where they can make a living doing it. Uh-huh. And I don't want, I don't need, my end goal for myself is not to just have the most money in the world and to have a crazy big yacht. My, my goal is to have enough money to do what I want to do and not have to worry about going broke doing it. You know what I mean? Like Facts. if I just had a house, just a house for me and my kids, I, the only thing that I really, really want that's super financially like like th- that's strictly based around finance is like a really nice car. I want like a Porsche or something one day. Yeah. And that's just a toy that I want, you know? But right. other than that, there's not really other, um, any other like crazy financial goals that I have for myself other than to have a company that like will, will accumulate generational wealth for me and my family, you know? But that's like something that, that doesn't have to do with like buying a yacht or anything. That's something that you have to build systems that will actually last and outlast you and your kids and mm. the kids after them. You know what I mean? And so that takes a lot of thought and effort. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Generational wealth. Yeah. I haven't talked about many people saying that that's what they want to create. Well, that, I, I think it, that's, and that's a big goal and that's, it, it's almost unattainable. But when you, when you see people who have done it and you meet people who, who have generational wealth and some people, they've had it from their parents. Some people have done it for themselves. I haven't met many people that have done it for themselves, but, um, I've met a lot of people who have it from their parents. And so yeah, uh, exactly. it's about, um, I think it, it's critical to, to realize that in order to set up generational wealth, it's about making sure that you actually have like financial literacy. And I think that that's something that isn't really talked about much nowadays. Like everyone wants to be rich. Everyone, like I'm sure you get the ads too about like, you wanna learn how to drop ship? Do you wanna learn how to make a bunch of money online? Everyone wants to learn how to make 10K a month online. It's ridiculous, right? It's what do you do with that 10K in order to get 100K a month or a million dollars a month if, if that's even possible, you know? And yeah. there are companies that do that. like huge companies, but you have to get there first, you know? And so I don't know. There's, a, I definitely have a long way to go in, in my journey through that. But like I said, right now, like I even touched on the fact that I feel like I've digressed after college, but that's okay because like not everything is straight up, you know, uh-huh. like you're going to go up, you're going to go down as long as you just keep a level head and are always learning and, um, taking inspiration from other people who are doing it too. And, um, yeah, if, if you can just do that and keep learning there, it's all about aligning yourself up for that that lucky opportunity, you know. Yeah, I don't know. What do where, you think? Where do you want to be in? I guess more short term. Well, here this will be interesting. You've seen, you know Mr. Obviously you know who Mr. Beast is, the YouTuber Mr. Mm-hmm. Beast. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen his videos where he's like, "Hi, me in five years. Hi, me yes, in ten years. Yes, I have. Yeah. Okay, bro, do one right now. Talk to yourself in five years. Look at the camera and what do you want to be in five years? Where do you want to be in your life? Hmm. Talking to future Andrew. How old will you be? 26? 26. I already have some goals for myself by the time I'm 26. I want, well, for me it's 27 just because that's the number. But 27-year-old Andrew is going to have at least half a million dollars. At <laughs> least. That's, and that's, that's not just because I want like a nice car, a nice house, or anything like that. That's just because I think if I can accumulate that much money at the age of 27, then I will know what to do in my 30s to make multiple millions of dollars, you know? Yeah. And so... And that's a big goal, and it's, it's honestly not as clear-cut as it may seem. I, I mean, a lot of people, sometimes they can sit down and just, like, it seems so easy for some people, you know? But it's really not. It's not that easy to just come up and, and build something from the ground up that, like, lasts, you know? Definitely but not easy. I've definitely been, I've been, I feel like, sometimes I often feel like I think too much, but, um, you yeah. You have to have 500K? 500K. Like to be happy? I'll always be happy. I'm, I'm pretty easygoing. Go. I don't think I'll, I'll ever not be happy, um. I want to keep acting, obviously. I want to win my, it's, I don't know when this will happen, but I want an Oscar. That's what I want. One nice. day I will have nice. an Oscar. Nice. That's the there way you go. It. Yeah. It's and I've been to... saying that since I was like 13 years old. Let's I, go. You know, I knew what's crazy is when I was 13, I was like, by the time I'm 20, I'm going to have an Oscar. And here I am at 21 and I'm like, by the time I'm 30, I'm going to have an Oscar. And then I'm going to be like, by the time I'm 40, I have an Oscar. So we're going to keep chasing that dream until it happens. Keep chasing it, bro. That's dope. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> bro, well, I think that about wraps it up. I. Thank you for being an inspiration to me. First time meeting you in person. Yeah. Um, I feel like I've dope. been filled up by you by what you're saying. So.
thanks for coming on here, bro. You did great. I yeah. can tell you've been on camera before. <laughs> I feel like I've learned a lot from watching you, even from when we went outside. Like, if the like, camera comes on, it seems like you know what you're doing. Um, no, it's not <laughs> even that. I mean, I've just been on camera so often that we're, it, it really doesn't make a difference. I think... Um, that's, that's wild. Yeah, I mean... Because the camera's just scary know. to a lot of people, including me. I mean, I think it's kind of weird. It's like eyes. Yeah, I mean, it, it's also... It's weird to think that someone's right there watching it, but I think that's the cool part is that yeah. they're right here watching us yeah. talk and they can maybe learn a thing or two uh -huh. or maybe even not learn a thing or two. Maybe sit and laugh, you know? Who knows? Yeah. As long as they sat here and enjoyed it. If you made it this far, <laughs> give this video a like. I really appreciate it. Smash Grayson's like busting Smash. his ass to do this stuff. <laughs> and he let me on, which is really nice of him. I loved it, you know? Bro, well, thank you for coming on and... Yeah, maybe we'll run another episode. Back. Oh, we definitely will. In the, in the next couple months, I'm gonna have something going, and like we'll 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 reconvene. And he's gonna be bald. He's gonna have gone monk mode. <laughs> and uh, monk mode. Yes, that yeah. could be a brand name, bro. That it. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> monk mode. Mm. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, brother. Thank Hell you yeah. so much. Thank you, Grayson. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Let's go. Hell yeah. Thanks.